hello everyone and welcome to a new video i'm simura here and in today's video we're gonna do a complete roster overview for street fighter 5 and we're gonna talk briefly about each character talk about their strengths and weakness their archetype where do you wanna or at least the effective range for each character and the general game plan obviously the game have a ton of them so let's not waste any time i'm gonna start from the left with rose make our way to the right and then rotate backwards so let's talk start with Rose and uh, Rose is one of the latest characters to be introduced to Street Fighter 5 she was added in the season V or the final season and as you can see we are having difficulties connecting to the game server let me know if it's only me who are having this issue uh, because it seems like it is difficult to join today anyway Rose is a character that is pretty strong from the mid range so this distance for Rose is actually pretty good she have a standing heavy bunch this have a lot of range and a is special cancelable she does have a good fireball game she has a soul punish that you can use to set up traps uh, from this distance you will find that she have attacks like I said the standing heavy bunch forward heavy kick back heavy kick forward medium kick and even her sweep so she specializes from this range now which V skill and V trigger setup are the best for Rose and I will say for this purpose you can kind of go any anything with her really and nothing uh, nothing is too bad with Rose there is no bad combination V skill 1 is good because you can feint the opponent with the shuffle cancels so you can do something like this they expect that you're doing a fireball and you can paint them with that this for example this burble card this will make your uh, fireballs or attacks in general do more ship damage so that's good each card have a buff i have done a full rose guide so you can uh, check this one out but yes v skill one is good v trigger one is also really good because it give you the teleport option which obviously you can use uh, in mix-ups like this or even use as a reversal and sort of a getaway tactic and obviously here v skill 2 and v trigger 2 are also pretty good uh, v trigger 2 you can use to bully the opponent uh, recently in the recent patch uh, when you go for a throw the timer doesn't deplete so you can go for tactics like this and obviously v skill 2 is the satellite and you can use this to cover your approach and make the negative situations uh, more plus right you can use it to your advantage now what is the main issues with rose the first one is obviously the lack of a true invincible reversal this is strike invincible but you can get thrown out of it uh, her anti-air is a crouching heavy bunch is good but you will not always be plus so if, for example if the opponent is jumping here uh, you can anti-air with this and see Rose was negative 1 on this so Ken could have landed and had the advantage but she does have a DP although you have to use it pretty early because only it is only upper body invincible so you can do a last moment DP overall Rose is a pretty good character she is one of the more technical characters of the roster but if you want a character that is strong at the mid range strong at control have some sort of set play and is good at zoning you can go with Rose now kind of in the same vein is Gil uh, Gil is different to Rose in that his zoning or his normals they're good but the thing about Gil is that he doesn't have a crush counter but instead he have what is called a retribution mechanic uh, the idea about Gil is that he is fire and ice so he have the fireballs the fire uh, fireballs which are typically fast or I should say the pyro fireballs which are typically fast and he have the cryokinesis or the cryo fireballs which are typically slow so you can use this to kinda zone the opponent maybe go with the slow fireball and use it to cover your approach and you can get some sequences like these you also have two very interesting v skills uh, the first one is the comment right and you can summon this in different angles it uh, it properties burn or ice will change depend on which v trigger you used the idea here what is really good about this is say once you set them on fire uh, if you do an attack that have an ice effect uh, you pretty much will get some free combos with him that is the whole gimmick of Gil instead of having regular crush counters like everyone you wanna use uh, an attack that induces the ice effect and then go for a fire attack or the other way around with Gil there is no really uh, extremely obvious V skill V trigger setup either because both of his V skills are pretty good uh, 
this comet is good because if the opponent happen to be blocking uh, you can actually induce the fire effect right so that actually is really good uh, because now you can threaten any hit and then cancel into ice and you do get big follow-ups here so yeah you can do some great combos from some sequences like this now what's really interesting with gil as well is that his uh v skill 2 is a two frame parry this is obviously the best parry in the game and one of the main issues with gil is that he doesn't have an invincible reversal uh he also have his three frame but his three frame is incredibly stubby as you can see the range on it is very very short so it's hard for Gil to challenge on defense that means that having the parry is actually really good for him now Gil also have two v two uh, decent v triggers uh, v trigger one you can do some mix up with it although I will say it's more geared toward draw damage while uh, v trigger two is the ice of doom you can kind of use the uh, like the ice here to go for some set play uh, but overall I think both of them are pretty decent overall Gil is a character who you can zone the opponent with unfortunately his defense have some issues so you will have to take some guesses and some reads with the parries he does have some decent normals I will say but they're not very rewarding the hitboxes aren't bad but they're not very rewarding and that makes playing him kind of difficult he I think is one of the characters that is maybe on the bottom half in terms of strengths next we got Kage and where can I go with Kage Kage is obviously a Shoto he is the evil Ryu variant of this game and uh, I think he's a pretty good character he has a lot going for him but he also has a lot going against him Kage is stubby that is the main issue with this character his range is short right a lot of his attacks have very short range which makes it hard to play neutral with him he also doesn't have a traditional Hadouken right his Hadouken is a short burst uh, and this means that it is kind of hard to play the neutral game now in exchange he has the red fireball and what is special about this red fireball is that he doesn't extend the hurt box so this means that it's very hard to hit Kage out of this fireball making it a good neutral tool from this range but obviously you have to be careful because it does have longer startup than the regular Hadouken they also give him the instant air air Hado now which will explode on hit like that and uh, yeah that can be good now the thing about Kage is that he's a very offensive rushdown oriented character and he does great damage and corner carry uh, for example a basic combo was Kage from a jump in uh, let's say you do something like this right 342 and we got the corner and then you throw them and you're right on top of them Kage is a very sticky character once he gets in he stays in his offense is very good and very scary now he does also have a good air approach uh, because his jump is kind of short so it's a, he it, like it comes out kinda quickly so he can be scary to anti-air and one thing that's really good about him is that he also have a dive kick so you can uh, like mix the timing on the opponent and a lot of people might second guess their anti-airs if you're anti or if you're jumping in on them like that now he also have pretty powerful v triggers and i will say v trigger one and uh, v skill two is a good combination because his v skill two turns into this power dunk and obviously you can do some insane follow-ups from that each hit will turn into great damage and uh, obviously like something as basic as this that's almost like 400 damage that's really good right so he is the glass cannon character now one thing that is notable about Kage is that when he activate his V trigger 2 he actually gets to have a regular fireball with the heavy Hadouken and it's actually a pretty good fireball he moves forward with it as well and he gets access to the raging demon which he can actually cancel into right so uh I don't know why I'm feeling it every single time now. Yep, now you get the demon. This is notable, right? Because demon obviously is amazing. So, amazing glass cannon, very high damage output, very sticky, very explosive. Unfortunately, he also does have low HP. 
So this is something that you kind of have to be careful around. Stubby normals and low HP, these are the main issues for Kage. Now let's talk about Falk. One of the main benefits of Falk is that if you're using the PC version, this character is placed with some of the best mods in Street Fighter V. Her, her mod game is top tier, thanks mostly to Adisan, I believe, who actually did a ton of great mods for this character. But anyways, Falk is one of the two characters who have easy inputs in Street Fighter V, and by easy inputs I mean they don't require motions to do their special moves, uh, for example his her uppercut that is just two punches, and catapult is like two kick, and her fireballs are just a hold punch and then release. Falk is a character that is really good at controlling the mid range, so from this distance she's actually pretty sick. Uh, her crouching medium punch is a very good poke, she have forward heavy punch and this is very annoying, have a lot of range and uh, if you have V triggers you can cancel uh, into V trigger out of it and that is uh, very good. She does have very good anti-air with her PP which is like the DP uh, attack and also she have an air throw and uh, this actually is very strong as well and in the air she have a jumping heavy kick that will put them in a float state so you can uh, juggle afterwards and one of the good things about Falk is that her jumping game is completely obnoxious you can just neutral jump with Falk and zone the opponent with fireball the charge on her fireball is actually very short as you can see like you can do it almost every single jump and then once you actually jump in with a normal and that can be hard to deal with she also have a jumping dive kick and this jumping dive kick can be used to like trick the opponent see this was a jump from the front into a cross up so that was actually pretty good now this character is kind of uh, I will say divisive because some people think she's very good some people don't think that highly of Falk I personally think she is a pretty strong character I must also say that her standing medium kick this is hit confirmable and uh, you can get some follow ups out of that and I will say her standing heavy punch this is a fantastic normal to catch the opponent over extending and obviously she have a one button DP which is like all three punches right but obviously you get crush countered with that so you kind of have to be careful so what are the main issues with Falk and I think the major issue with this character is that her Oki isn't amazing uh, like say for example you go for this knockdown it's really hard to actually follow up here you go for the other one and you don't really get that much uh, you kind of have to go for meter attacks Right, like this is how you get the Oki on back rise. But because this is a character that is really good at controlling the mid range, I don't think that is the most crippling issue. Right, like her biggest issue is yes, she doesn't get that good of an Oki, but this is a character that is playing the mid range control game. So I think that's fine. I honestly think that's fine. Given all of her strengths, I'll take it. Minat is one of these characters that is considered by many to be really technical and really really hard. Um, Minat is probably like I think the most considered to be the hardest character in the game. A lot of people consider her that way and that is mostly thanks to her V Trigger 1. Uh, v Trigger 1 for Minat is one of the more uh, it's one of the most free-flowing V triggers in the game. You can do a lot. You pretty much summon six orbs, and on a negative edge release, you get to control which one, uh, like you wanna let go, which make it a very strong V trigger. But yeah, there is a lot of execution that is required to be optimal with her V trigger one. Uh, with some practice, obviously you can get there, and we will get to talk about it later. But the idea behind Minat is kind of weird, right? Because this is a character that pretty much wanna play the zoning game. You wanna zone the opponent with her normals. The one thing about Minat that is very special is that her orbs doesn't have hurt box. So it's very good to just harass the opponent with the orb toss attacks and I would say even her japs like this is very annoying and actually very very good and obviously the medium punch as well now the thing about her is that once you set the opponent away or once you set the orb away like let's say you set the orb away like that on the recall Minat will be very very plus so this means that Minat actually have a kind of a decent pressure game 
all things considered right because you can do for stuff like that and go for a grab so she does have some sort of an unorthodox pressure game and obviously you can do the explosion and the orb will return back to your hand this is a character that is playing a keep away game and if the opponent is trying to overextend so much you can punish them into plus frame by recalling back the orb and once you have v trigger you go in for a great mix ups uh, with her, I would say V skill 1 is very good if you're fighting against a fireball character because this is a fireball reflect. V skill 2 seems to be good otherwise, uh, but it seems to me like most of the Manat players are using V skill 1 anyways. She is one of the harder characters in the game, uh, but I think she is a lot of fun. Next, we got Akuma, and uh, much like Kage, Akuma is a glass cannon. Right. This is a character where you are trading in, you know, HP, you're trading in uh, health for tools. And Akuma have a lot of them, obviously have the regular fireball, the red fireball, he have the demon flip, he have a ton of target combo with the uh, standing heavy watch target combo and the standing heavy kick target combo. And obviously he does have his teleport. Akuma in general have a lot of tools and his standing medium kick still is one of the best whiff punished normals in the game. The thing is fantastic, the opponent whiffs anything, you whiff punish him with that, it forces a stand, so he gets the light kick tatsu. Akuma does a ton of damage, right? And uh, this is something that I've always been good about him. Now, in general, in the previous season, Akuma was always considered to be one of the best characters in the game. Right now, he is more of a mid tier, uh, but he's still very good. I think for most levels of gameplay he's very good. The aerial fireball will take you far and he is a kumba, right? He's a classic Shoto. Obviously have the raging demon as well, right? So you can do a lot with that. It is, however, uh, it is locked behind his V-Trigger 1. And this is one of the main reasons that Many Akuma players still run his uh, V Trigger 1 because Demon is actually pretty powerful. But uh, I, I've seen also a lot of V Trigger 2 Akuma, so you can kind of play both of them. His V Skill 1 is a good parry, and uh, you can combo into it, which is good for meter building. His pressure is actually very strong, especially in the corner. So this is a character that you can't really go wrong with. The only issue with Akuma is that he is quite technical. Akuma have 900 HP and 900 HP means that he has the lowest HP in the game. Now this wouldn't be so bad if Akuma had long range normals, but unfortunately he doesn't. Uh, a lot of the Shotos in this game are pretty stubby which means that they have short range on the normals. His walk speed actually is pretty good. So you kind of have to play a fireball game with walk in, walk out of your opponent range and with punish, or you can try to overwhelm them with your uh, pressure and your mix ups. This makes life kind of difficult with Akuma, right? Because you kind of have to consistently outplay your opponents. And obviously that isn't the best case scenario. So let's do some editing magic and now we are gonna talk about Alex because this character is a neutral beast. Uh, his mid-range control is actually very powerful. Alex is somewhat of a neutral beast character but is also very explosive. If you care the most about making Twitter clips and uh, doing cool looking comeback sequences, this is a character for you. His crouching medium punch is one of the most annoying pokes in the game. Standing heavy kick actually is pretty good, although this is with punishable as hell, so you kind of have to be careful. His standing heavy punch uh, is also pretty good at beating pokes. Uh, so let's say for example that the opponent is doing something like this. Uh, chances are Alex's uh, Standing heavy punch will actually kinda beat it. Uh, it's very good at these purposes, right? Uh, it, it pretty much finds buttons, and uh, that is great for him. And obviously, he also has the light slash elbow, which is uh, very good in the neutral as well. It's pretty much safe. And uh, one of the things about this character is that he also has the EX Stomp. This is minus two or plus two on block, I'm sorry, uh, which means that you can immediately go for a mix up between a grab or hit so that is powerful you kind of have to keep it into consideration now this character does a ton of damage if alex hit you once you're pretty much hitting 
a ton of damage on every hit so something this simple is doing almost 400 damage we got the corner carry and obviously plus 23 so he will dash up and uh, still have plus frames amazing damage output he used to have bad okay but since they give him this combo so that the ex knee now his grounded opponent yeah he can combo end into uh, a further okay opportunity if he wants this is actually very very good so what are the issues with alex the main problem with this character is his defense still uh, he doesn't have a three frame and he doesn't have a true invincible reversal he does have the ex elbow and this have armor from frames three but he doesn't have an invincible reversal so when he gets knocked down he kind of have to guess on defense but honestly his damage output and his neutral control are very very powerful at the moment uh, and he is very explosive so even if you're losing you can still make crazy comebacks with him now let's talk about mr rashido -da 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 -da. because this is a complete package this is honestly the complete package this character does it all he have a very strong mid range his standing medium kick is actually very good this crouching heavy punch is legendary for how stupid it is as a crush counter you pretty much keep swinging with it until you hit the opponent once and uh then they are in the corner isn't this amazing right you have a standing heavy bunch and this is also very good at crushing uh, opponent attacks so if ken is swinging with his uh, heavy kick right this is very very good at that this like beats buttons all day and it's a very reliable crush counter doesn't really have that much in terms of like whiff recovery as well so it's actually very good to just throw this out there uh, and uh, he does have a standing heavy kick which is very good as well his normals and uh, footsies game is just very very solid you wouldn't expect a character that is clearly built for rushdown to actually have such a good space control and his crouching light kick is still one of the better low shakes in the game this crouching medium kick is special cancelable so you can kind of play the crouching medium kick into fireball game with him as well have the forward medium bunch that have great range and even if they happen to block the second hit he is completely safe Rashid is very powerful in the neutral and he does have this neutral jump that looks like it's forward jumping so you can kind of cheese the opponent with it have a dive kick so you can feign the opponent and he does have the fastest dash in the game his dash is 15 frames so it is actually very fast this is honestly the fastest dash in the game frames wise the animation on it is more seeable than some of the others but still very good one of the things that are special about Rashid is that if you hold forward he will actually transition into a run and uh, this makes his offense kind of powerful because from this range you can just kind of throw or run at the opponent and then go and grab them and uh, this can be scary now he also has the mixer attacks and these are special moves and they are very good the light mixer like you can see it's actually a very good book even from like the just a little bit after the run start distance uh you're kind of can you can use it and p minus one or minus two and that is very good and if it happened to hits uh you just get to knock down the opponent right obviously you kind of have to mash it to get the uh more powerful versions but you get the idea now what makes rashid a true nightmare of a character to fight against is his corner carry because it is insane Right, like this is one combo and now the opponent is in the corner so you might be asking why is this very powerful well it's very powerful because his corner game is actually pretty insane right rashid is one of the best characters in the game at applying pressure in the corner thanks to his uh, short wall jump which he actually can use to cross up the opponent and also he can cancel his uh, heavy whirlwind and the ex whirlwind he can kind of cancel them into his V skill and keep the offense going. This makes his pressure very powerful. And obviously, once he gets you in the corner, uh, like he can shimmy you or hit you once and then go for uh, like a knockdown. And his damage output will actually increase exponentially in the corner. So, what are the issues with Rashid? Seems like a character that he that got it all, and for the most part, he actually does. Uh, one of his main issues now is that his reversal, the EX mixer, this is a slower reversal, so you can meet it and still block it in time. 
Otherwise, he's a little bit unorthodox, but I wouldn't say that this is a weakness. Uh, he is a little bit weird, but honestly, this is a character that is pretty much the complete package and have been very powerful in this game for a very long time now. Uh, Rashid is gold, honestly. Next up is the Rainbow Mika, and uh, Rainbow Mika is actually my first main in Street Fighter V, this is the character that I main at first. If you love tossing around coins, if you love making the opponent guess, if you love offensive rushdown and just harassing your opponent constantly with offense, then Mika is the character for you. Uh, what is so special about our Mika is that she's one of two characters in this game. I believe that actually have, I, I shouldn't say two, but she does actually have a real command grab vortex. Mika does a brimstone, dashes up, and she is plus two. And this means that she can loop the command grab, right? And obviously this makes people very annoyed, uh, because you kind of have to guess on wake up. Now, the thing about Mika, if you have noticed, is that the command grab isn't doing a lot of damage, right? On the heavy version, you are doing 140 damage, 150 stun is not that threatening, but the consistency of the pressure can make the opponent uh, antsy. And obviously on hit, she actually does do a fairly good damage output, uh, like her basic combo, something like this is almost 290 damage so that is quite uh, considerable now mika also have a like the body splash and this will change her jump arc and you can use it to mix up the opponent once you get the opponent in the corner mika have very powerful mix ups there uh, because she can go for stuff like that and uh, like harass the opponent with her left right resets and command grabs so it all seems very good for this character, but what are her issues? Uh, the main issue with Armika obviously is that she kind of have to play in a risky way. This is a character that have to take risks to win, and for the most part, the risk reward for Mika isn't in her favor, right? Uh, she's one of these characters that kind of have to take many risks, and you kind of have to have a good read on the opponent. Her neutral game isn't the best either, her normals are kind of stubby, so life isn't the easiest with Armika and obviously with V-Shift, now things are somewhat hard for this character. Now let's talk about Shun Li, right? Shun Li is the first lady of Street Fighter and fighting games in general. This is a character that obviously needs no introduction. Chun Li is one of the premier footsies characters. This is one of the characters with a better mid-range control in the game. The standing heavy bunch is legendary for ruining people days. The standing heavy kick is also very good as well at uh, like catching people with fireballs. She does have the forward medium bunch and this one actually is very good uh, because it's zero on block so you can kind of harass the opponent with it. It is fairly fast as well and if it happened to hit as a counter hit uh, you actually do get to combos and EX select after and get the knockdown. One of the other good things about this character I just showed is EX legs. EX legs is an attack with five frames start up and as you can see the range on it is actually very good for a 5 frames. This means that this is very good at punishing the opponent on block. So for example, if Ken is doing something like this, right? As you can see, this was a punish. Not many characters actually can punish like a fireball from this distance, but Shun Li can. So Shun Li is a character that wanna poke the opponent a lot and still uh, and punish them when they try to overextend. That is the main game plan. She does have a pretty good fireball and you can play Shun Li in somewhat of a turtly way, but uh, overall she is poke and punish the character. Shun Li does have some very technical aspects to her and this is something that I have to mention. If you wanna unlock the full potential of Shun Li, uh, you wanna be able to uh, be competent with charge because her main primary uh, bread and butter does require some, uh, I should say, some good charge technique. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have to use the heavy kick legs, which does significantly reduce her Oki. So this is something that you have to be careful of. And obviously, there is stuff like change charging the, uh, like canceling the jab into bird kick, 
which also can be pretty technical. Chun Li have also two very good V triggers. The first one I really like uh, because it lets you combo from her overhead. Right, so I was able to combo from her overhead, which is safe anyways, and you get to combo from her crouching light kick and uh, get into a, like really big combo so that is great you can also combo from the forward or back medium punch because this is now plus five so you actually get to follow up there that actually is pretty sick and if the opponent happened to jump and you have v trigger one active uh, you can anti-air onto combos so that is pretty great as well right and v trigger one opens up a lot of really cool mechanics for the character and v trigger two is very good as well it is the kikosho pretty much you hit them with any poke cancel into kikosho and then you get to follow up for combo right this is good stuff now what are the main issues with Sean Lee? Uh, because although I do think this is a character that is very powerful and a lot of people rate her really highly She does have some issues and the main issue with Shun Li is her uh, Anti-air game because it is somewhat of a spotty game uh, Like if you try to anti-air with the far range standing light kick you are very prone to trading or just straight out losing Her standing heavy kick is somewhat spotty like it will not beat all of the jumps and back heavy kick works only for close range jumps so you kind of have to be careful of that like if the opponent is jumping in uh, from a distance and as uh, he did an empty jump and you happen to try to jump anti-air with a back heavy kick you will actually get punished for that so you kind of have to be careful this is a big issue for the character now another issue with Shun Li in my opinion is that she's bad at chasing opponents characters who uh, like to run away a lot like let's say characters like Minette, Poison, Jury these will give her some issues because she it is kind of difficult to force the issue with Shun Li you kind of have to earn your neutral wins and uh, next up we got Ryu Mr. Street Fighter and who doesn't know Ryu right uh, Fireball, Uppercut, Tatsu in this game obviously you have the donkey kick Ryu is the ultimate jack of all trades he does a little bit of everything but Ryu isn't really amazing at anything in this game I will say uh, he does have a fairly decent fireball game uh, the light fireball is actually pretty good and the heavy fireball is really fast now so you can kind of uh, throw it at the opponent from this range and they will have some difficulties reacting to it making him have a decent zoning game and obviously he have one of the better uppercuts in this game for anti-airs and if the opponent having to jump in at you and uh, like they happen to uh, like jump over you like a cross up uh, you can always like anti-air with a cross cut so that is uh, very powerful as well it means that the skies are very much protected one of the things that are very powerful about Ryu in Street Fighter V is his dash and for this, uh, from this range, Ryu is actually quite threatening, uh, his normals are stubby, so Ryu doesn't have the best range, but he does have a good dash, jump or solar plex game, right? It's somewhat of an obnoxious game to play and if the opponent is expecting you to attack, they might throw some buttons, which means that you can use the X fireball which have a very uh, like it's very hard to hit Ryu out of this and obviously if it happened to hit you will uh, get a knockdown and you will uh, get the uh, advantage here you get to actually pressure the opponent on this knockdown which is very good one of the highlights of Ryu also is that his damage output is absurdly high like each hit with Ryu will do a lot of damage obviously if you have the V trigger 2 right some very basic combo like that is like almost 60 percent of the opponent health right so this is a character that can do a little bit of everything jack of all trades as you should be also like i said the dash solar plexus jump uh, game or ex fireball is actually uh, considerably strong so what are the main issues with ryu and like i said his main issue is that he is pretty stubby uh, Ryu's range on his normals are below average 
for Street Fighter V and he, his Oki is pretty good in this game now thanks to his Tatsu but still some characters are actually better the main issue I would say with him is his normals uh, this is a character that will be outranged by most of the cast so it can be hard to play neutral with him but his fireball game is pretty good unfortunately some of the characters who have good normals also have good anti-zoning tools uh, and that can make life very difficult for you now let's talk about the other Choto and that is obviously Mr. Ken uh, because Ken is uh, very much like Ryu although he's much more geared toward offense if you want a character that's about relentless rushdown flashy combos Ken is a character for you this guy is amazing at rushing down the opponent one of the best things about Ken is obviously his heavy bunch sure you can because this is very easy to hit confirm uh, out of stack or anything pretty much right like you do a crouching medium punch and then you can link a DB afterward crouching medium kick and then hit confirm into DP pretty much all of his target combos or like strings you can uh, super can or special cancel into DP and then follow up after that obviously sometimes it is more optimal to combo into the heavy kick tatsu but you get the idea the thing about Ken is that this is a character that if he touches you with anything he will get ok he will get consistent pressure now one of the strongest aspects of Ken that is very special about him is that when he does the EXDP he actually gets to get pressure afterwards right after an EXDB, Ken can run forward and he will be plus. This is very uncommon in Street Fighter V, right? Very few characters have this. Uh, I'm, I think it's only him and uh, I think Sean Lee gets like very specific OK on EX uh, spinning bird kick but only on a quick rise. Anyways, this is amazing. Like you have no idea how much scarier it makes you on defense when you have an EXDB that you can turn into offense. And Ken's neutral game, I will say, is pretty good. Uh, his fireball is not as good as Ryu uh, in this game, but it's still kind of decent. It's not the worst fireball. He does have obviously strong anti-air game thanks to his DP, and he does have pretty good normals for wave punishing. Now one of the things about Ken that have made him special this season is his Shin Ryuken which is V trigger uh, 2 uh, because this can be used to wave punish you pretty much turning hits into a lot of damage right you pretty much wave punish with anything cancel into Shin Ryuken and that is a lot of damage as you can see so that is actually pretty good with the character now and obviously he does have another unique aspect to him and that is he have a pretty decent uh, high low game uh, he can combo from a crouching light kick like that and his overhead step kick uh, this will leave him at a plus three which means that he can get to combo a tatsu afterwards now what are the issues with Ken just like Ryu, just like all of the other Shotos, they are stubby, they have short range. Uh, Ken does have pretty good walk speed actually, so it's not that bad with him, but still you will be struggling in the neutral. Short range means that you kind of have to walk or throw a lot of fireballs. Just as I said with Ryu, some characters have strong anti-fireball tools, so life can be hard. However because uh, he does have good walk speed it's kind of alright and his wave punishing is very rewarding unlike Ryu so that is something that you kind of have to keep in mind he also doesn't have a 3 frame normal but he has a 3 frame uh, special moves and EXDB is amazing so I can't really say his defense is poor uh, it's just different than the other characters next up we got Kami and Kami is uh, one of the characters that have ruled Street Fighter V for a very long time this is a character that have always been good at the moment she is pretty strong but i'm not sure about her status as the top tier anymore although she like i said she is pretty good kami is very very straightforward this character is very straightforward uh, you pretty much want to poke the opponent if they happen to do anything that is uh with punishable you will punish them into spiral arrow and then go for your oki it is that simple with her really any knockdown into spiral arrow and then you go for hit or grab 
or hate or like shimmy uh, mix up right i've done a lot of guides on basic pressure sequences uh, i will leave a link to that playlist below so you can check her out i have also done a full cami guide if you are interested one of the special things about cami is that her jumping game is powerful uh, because she does have a dive kick and uh, obviously three different versions they go different distances and she does have an ex uh, version as well uh, you can kind of tiger knee this and if you do uh, or like hit it really low you will be blast and then you can get to throw the opponent after or pressure them so that's kind of interesting uh, but yeah it's pretty much knock down the opponent go for a strike or throw a mix up her neutral game is very good this is a good poke this is a good poke and this is a good wave punish and her crouching medium kick is a good low shake very very straightforward character now her aerial game is pretty interesting uh, because like you can see her dive kicks you can play around a lot with it but they did kind of nerf it with the v-shift uh, patch uh, now they do have sizable uh, recovery on whiff so if the opponent happened to v-shift you you can get punished so what are the main issues with Kami? Uh, the primary issue with Kami is that she now sits at a 900 hp right uh, the average character now have 1025 so she is significantly lower at uh, like she have significantly lower health they also did nerf her damage output a little bit so she uh, she isn't killing the opponent as fast as she used to obviously still a pretty good character but the uh, nerfs to the hp that unfortunately is substantial next up we got vega and um vega is one of these characters that it's kind of in a weird place with Street Fighter V because uh, some people think he's pretty good, some people don't think that highly of him. Vega is a character that have two stances. He can be played extremely classy and be played with an extremely clean neutral. Like you just poke the opponent with the pokes, they happen to whiff an attack and then you whiff punish them. Like you can just poke at them like that they whiff and uh, like you whiff punish you can do it that way if you got the reaction or you can play him in a very crazy way uh vega is one of these characters that can be played absolutely crazy right uh his slide is always annoying in the neutral you kind of always have to uh, be wary of it he does have a very fast dash and uh he does have two modes which is the claw mode and the bare hand and with the bare hand he can just command grab you so this is something that you have to be careful of and obviously he does have the sky high claw which actually is pretty irritating right uh this attack can be hard to see right especially since he can activate the trigger out of that and get some damage there so it's kind of cheesy vega is somewhat cheesy right and obviously you can cheese the opponent with uh the sky high claws if you want or like the barcelona's uh, i should say so he can be played in a very controlled way or in a very naughty way and it's up to you to decide which one you want to use although i will say both of them kind of work he does have very solid damage output as well so what are the main issues with vega and uh, the primary issue with vega is her anti is his anti-air game uh, because vega's anti-airs are i don't want to say they are weak but it's very hard for him to do a last second anti-air right uh, you kind of have to like air throw the opponent maybe go for the heavy uh, like aurora edge so that's not bad as well or just walk under them and uh, hit them during recovery frames not I, I i don't i don't like to use like bad anti-airs with vega because i really don't think they're bad but they are certainly not the best and he doesn't have an invincible reversal his v skill 2 is invincible from frame 1 so this is something that i kind of have to mention like you can use this and uh, as you can see i'm like i'm this killing through his crouching medium kick it is invincible frame one uh, but obviously does have some recovery so this is something that you have to be careful of uh his damage output is also very high uh vega in general does a lot of damage right so this is the basic combo with him 330 in my opinion that is uh pretty good right uh Obviously, you can do for another variant like that, and that is almost 360 damage. 
lot of damage for this character. His V triggers aren't the best, uh, they can kind of be used to extend damage, but they're nothing too special. Although I will say one of the good things about his V trigger one is because when you throw it out there, you pretty much consume it. It means that he gets to activate multiple times per round, which uh, is ultimately a good thing for him and uh, he, because obviously he can convert after it. That is something that you kind of have to keep in mind. Next up we got Nikoli and this is a character that you can forget he's in the game. A lot of people actually forget that Nikoli is in the game. A lot of others say that Nikoli is the true Shoto of this game. Nikoli is the Ryu of Street Fighter V uh, and uh, in many ways that is true, right? Because Nikali have a lot of the basics of the show too, right? So he has the pressure, he has the DP, it's not like an anti-air invincible DP, but the hitbox on it is actually very good, and it is very fast, so that actually is uh, really good. Nikali have a really good dash attack, right? You can kind of use this and this will set up Oki. He does have a, a replacement for the fireball, which is the V-Skill 1 Seismo. And you can actively use this to build your V gauge, right? And obviously a bunch of target combos as well. And he does have a command grab. And he does have a dive kick. And obviously after this dive kick, he can kind of combo after it. It's a dive kick that is somewhat similar to what uh, either Ryu and Akuma have, right? So that is actually pretty good. And once you get them to the corner, you can loop the command grab, <laughs> which is always pretty funny, right? Uh, and obviously it gave us one of the more iconic moments uh, of Street Fighter V where Phenom was repeatedly dunking Daigo. The thing about Nikali, what's always been special about him is his uh, V-Trigger, right? Because once Nikali activates V-Trigger, his movement speed is actually very fast and the dash is very fast and very hard to react to as well, right? So this is the regular dash, but the V-Trigger dash, damn, this is really fast. And uh, he does have like a pretty good throw situation on a back throw. He dashes up and he is plus 5 or plus 6. So he actually get to throw Lubiu on a back throw. This is somewhat interesting. And obviously with the V trigger, uh, his uh, in damage output is actually insane. Right? V trigger Nikali is one of the more annoying and one of the best characters in this game. So what are the issues with Nikali? Since it seems that he has like the basic defense, good suite of rushdown offense, and a good V trigger. Well, the main issue with this character is that he is pretty stubby. I said Nikali is the Ryu of this game, and yep, pretty much the same issue as Ryu. Pretty stubby normal, so you have to rely on seismos. You have to rely on uh, like buffering into something, and pretty much catching the opponent overextending. And he also kind of have to rely on his V-Trigger and activating V-Trigger to get rounds. But he is a pretty decent character all around. His damage output is actually very high as well. So he's a little bit of a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Uh, very similar to Ryu in functionality, I will say. Or at least the base idea. Now let's talk about Guile. Gile. Right, because this character is a classic Sonic Boom, Flash Kick, and it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, Guile is just about having very powerful zoning and having amazing normals. Sonic Boom is will and forever will be one of the best projectiles in fighting games, right? This character can zone, right? He can keep you at bay, and his offense is actually pretty good. Uh, Guile have one of the best uh, mix-ups in the game, in my opinion. It, and it's really annoying one, which is like he can throw you or he can go for the upside down kick and upside down kick leave him at a plus four so he can combo after it. That obviously is pretty important. If he happened to get blocked, he is minus two. So he is totally safe there. That is something that is actually very good. So he have a lot of strong uh, space control with the booms. The opponent happened to jump, you flash kick him or use one of his other 10 anti-airs uh, because this character have a ton of anti-air sending medium kick will anti-air crouching heavy kick will anti-air uh, the, the guile high kick will anti-air 
Uh, at some points even had a crouching jab anti air. It's kind of gone now, but this was pretty obnoxious. And obviously he does have the uh, somersault kick. Let's wait for him to jump again. Right, somersault or the flash kick, which is the classic anti air. Now, one of the other really good thing about Guile is that if, say, that you are, uh, like, you have a life lead and you're content at letting Guile zone, he can use the light boom and use it to turn it into pressure. And if he happen to get a V skill one out, this is pretty much a free throw or strike mix up. So you kind of have to be very aware of that, right? He also does have a surprisingly good walk speed and amazing normals. Uh, this standing heavy kick is really good. Back heavy bunch is good. Forward heavy bunch, the so bats. Gal normals are fantastic all around. So what are the main issues with Guile? And uh, the main issue with Guile, I'll say, is still his reliance on booms. Because characters who uh, by buzz fireballs easily will actually give him a hard time uh, because now he will have to rely on normals and Guile doesn't convert that well without charge. So this is something that is kind of an issue for him. But otherwise, I will say he is fairly well rounded. He doesn't do that much damage uh, mid screen. In the corner he can do a lot of damage and with the right resources he can do a lot of damage but his punishing in general isn't that damaging. So I would say mediocre damage output and reliance on booms. Now let's talk about Colleen, right? Uh, because Colleen is also one of the new characters in this game. Colleen came out in season 2 and uh, she wasn't that amazing until they gave her V trigger 2 which was absolutely spectacular, right? I did get nerfs a little bit, but I think Colleen is still a fairly good character. Colleen is much like a... I say Kami in way. This is a character that is about playing the mid-range, poking at the opponent with your superior pokes, and going for a wave punish. Now, what makes Colleen pretty strong in my opinion is her V-Trigger 2 and her dash and mobility in general. Uh, Colleen have a very good dash, right? Uh, I think she, her dash is one of the hardest dashes to react to. Her throw is also very good mid-screen and one of the few characters that have a pretty strong mid-screen throw game. This is something that you kind of have to keep in mind. Her low shakes aren't as amazing as Kami because this crouching medium kick isn't cancelable, but it is plus one, so this is something that you also have to keep in mind. And Colleen have the standing heavy punch. This is an 8 frame crush counter attack, right? And that makes it very good. Uh, Right, because you can get conversions like this and obviously she used to get a ton out of that in uh, the previous patches. Now all of Colleen's strengths like the pokes and whiff punishing and everything gets even a lot better once Colleen starts activating her V trigger uh, 2 because the dash now turns into a full screen slide that you can kind of convert after. The standing heavy punch becomes a weapon of mass destruction because this now have insane range very fast, very hard to wave punish, and you get to convert after, so this normal is absolutely absurd. Now, it did get nerfed from the previous seasons, but it is still actually fairly good. Now, one thing that sets Colleen apart from the other characters is that she doesn't only have the uh, poke and punish game. Colleen also have a good set play game thanks to her hail projectile, right? And uh, you can kind of use this to set up sequences. Right? Something as basic as that is uh, pretty good. Even in uh, like in V-Trigger. Right? Uh, you can do some tricks there. And obviously there are a lot of resets where uh, you can use the hail as well. So this is a strong aspect of her. Now Colleen also has some counters or some parries. Uh, it's pretty much a high low, high mid and low counters and if you guess right at the opponent attack and like which type of parry you should counter it with uh, you will get rewarded with insane damage so this for example is the air parry right you get this and you get to set up okay and have amazing set play there uh, the other way around for example if i go for the low parry yeah, you also get to set up damage and you get the pressure. So the high-low game with this character actually is uh, pretty strong. 
So overall, what are her weaknesses? Like you've seen, she doesn't have the best anti-fireball tools. Uh, Colleen is one of these characters that will pretty much struggle versus fireballs because her pokes are good, yes, the dash are good, the normals are good, but there isn't that much in terms of anti-fireballs. She does have this, but it's way too slow and too punishable. And um, her defense is kind of relying on guessing, like the parries or the counters are pretty good, but still uh, I will say not as reliant as a true reversal, but I will say they are uh, very rewarding at least when you happen to land them. That is something that you kind of have to keep in mind. Now let's switch over to Ziku. And this character is deep. This character is really, really deep. Uh, Ziku is pretty much a two in one, and you get two versions of this guy. There is the old Ziku, and there is the young Ziku. Uh, old Ziku is good for zoning, and he has the uppercut. Young Ziku has the superior walk speed, and does a ton of damage, and is really good for combos. Now, one of the powerful things about Ziku is his Bushin flip right and uh, you can kind of use this to hit the opponent from the front uh, you can use this to go over their head and go for a cross up so it's actually very good or you can just go for a grab right so it's a kind of a demon flip or at least a hooligan combination time move now couple this with his zoning and uh, he does actually have a fairly decent space control. Now what's really good about Ziku is that you can special cancel into the switch and then special cancel afterwards. So for example, uh, let's say for example that you end a combo with young Ziku, right? And then immediately cancel into old Ziku. Right? And then you can cancel into whatever special you want, which means that he pretty much now have a consistent wheel of rushdown options right Ziku is complicated but the main idea is old zones young rushes down old have good anti-airs and short normals young have long normals but poor anti-airs although his standing medium kick is actually a pretty good anti-air this character does a ton of damage and stun right uh, for example one basic combo is Ziku like that Right, this is almost 390 damage. That is some absurd damage out, but and obviously you got the corner carry as well. Very, very powerful character. But what are his issues? The main issue with Zeku is, as you have seen, he his tools are separated between two different forms. If you want the strong uh, mid-range presence, the strong whiff punishing, and just having good mobility and the low threat. Young Ziku is the guy for you, but if you want to zone the opponent, old Ziku is the guy for you. However, not having access to all of these tools at the same time means that you can get caught in uh, while you're in the less optimal stance. So that obviously is an issue with him. Another one, in my opinion, is that he is somewhat complicated. Uh, you can take this with a grain of salt, obviously. Uh, because you can say this is a non-issue, but having the um, the presence of like constantly switching and being able to keep up with what you're doing actually is somewhat difficult with him, I must say. Next up we got my boy, Cody. And uh, why play Cody? Because MC Mura plays Cody, right? This is good enough reason. Uh, but for real though, Cody is a character that I find to be very fun. Cody is mostly about with punishing the opponent and poking at them. This character with punishes into absurd damage. Uh, like one basic with punish with Cody and uh, you pretty much combos into Heavy Kick Rufian, into the or EX, into Heavy Kick, and you're doing all of that. If you happen to have level 2 zone stored, this character will with punish into a ton of damage right and obviously he have a fireball so you can kind of zone the opponent and he have the ex zonk ex zonk is one of the i would say one of the dumbest moves in the game because it is plus three on block and you can just walk up and throw the opponent after you're not in throw range immediately so you kind of have to micro walk into it 
although that is still pretty good. Cody have fantastic normals. His standing medium kick is really good. The forward heavy kick is really good. And obviously his uh, standing heavy kick is really good. V skill too, this way. This is one of the most special moves in the game because it is active from frame two. So you can dodge a lot of attacks and actually uh, be able to punish the opponent with it. So let's say for example here that Ryu is throwing a Hadouken, you can kinda sway and then punish him. And you can do this very late, like it's frame 2, so you can do it as late as possible and uh, be able to bypass the fireball. And this way 2 kick follow up as you can see have a lot of range, so that one actually is pretty good. Cody also have two very powerful V trigger, uh, V trigger 1 will give him the knife, which means that now he gets extended range. And some of the knife normals are some of the best in the game, in my opinion, right? And uh, V Trigger 2 will give him the pipe, and obviously with the pipe he gets access to some set play, and get access to the command grab, you can kind of go for she's like that, right? And then grab the opponent, bam. The damage and stun out, but honestly in Cody is pretty ridiculous if you want a character that is pretty straightforward does a ton of damage have good set play option and pretty much reward you for your spacing cody is the character for you so what are his main issues the main issue with cody is his lack of defensive options uh, he doesn't have a three frame and doesn't have a dp his only invincible option is super so you kind of have to keep that in mind right uh, your defense as a player need to be on point to have good success with Cody. You also have some issues with some angles when it comes to anti-airing, but with some spacing, you can get the hang of it. Now, let's talk about Poison, uh, my other character. And uh, much like uh, Cody, Poison is also a character that is very good at controlling space. Her mid-range presence is very powerful. Poison is one of the most frustrating characters to fight against in this game because her long range control is tremendous. Uh, he ha she has the medium rate and this is one of the main zoning tools for her. Her crouching heavy bunch have very long range as you can see and it's low so it's very annoying. Poison does a lot of damage as well, uh, like one basic jumping combo is Poison. I kinda messed it up this one. Right? But let's say this is a basic jumping combo and you're doing like 360 into Oki, so that actually is pretty ridiculous. Her control game in general is very powerful and Poison have one of the best normal anti-airs in the game as thanks to her crouching medium bunch. This honestly is pretty good as an anti-air, right? So you pretty much control with your long range and when they jump you anti-air with a crouching medium bunch and she also have the light kick heal and this also is a fairly good anti-air and if you happen to trade with it you can actually get some decent results here so that actually is uh, pretty nice poison also have a very good ability to force the opponent uh, into uh, minus frames or at least to force good situations for her uh, pretty much you do any hit and then you cancel into the heavy like the medium EX rate and this leaves poison at a plus one advantage which means that she can uh, press or maybe go for a grab or maybe go for a shimmy right so good space control high damage output good anti-airs and when the opponent uh, is trying to approach you you can force them into blast frames and pretty much turn it into your turn. Now she also have a pretty annoying throw game because as you can see her throw range actually is very very good. So what are the main issues with poison? What are her uh, main problems? And the main one is just like Cody, she doesn't have an invincible reversal. Uh, she does have a 3 frame, her standing jab is a 3 frame. That's a pretty decent one actually, got a lot of range and is cancelable into heal. So that is pretty good, but she lacks a true reversal, which obviously is somewhat of an issue. Like, means that you have to be kind of good on defense if you wanna play this character, but her neutral game is amazing, her range and damage outputs are both very very high. 
Now let's talk about this. And uh, this is a character that was very problematic at some point in this game. Uh, this they were clearly the best character in the game back during uh, season four when they first came out, thanks to the axe kick. This is pretty much a cami idea or a cami style character, right? Uh, this got good pokes, not as powerful as Kami, I will say, but they're still pretty good. But this got amazing buffers and with punish ability, right? Uh, the V skill one, which is the tandem engine, uh, this have a lot of range, will suck the opponent in, and then you can kind of combo after it. Uh, they got immensely and immensely annoying jumping game, uh, thanks to the instant air tatsu, right? Because this is very difficult to anti-air for some characters, and uh, obviously you can just go for a cross-up jump, or go from a, like a regular jump, or mix up with it. That part of it actually is uh, pretty powerful, and the with punishing game is very good, because they can cancel into the uh, EX mat. Uh, I think it's called like the EX, I'm not sure honestly what it's called, but it's pretty much the EX Tatsu, right? Because Mad Cradle is the DB. So they can combo into the EX Tatsu and get some crazy follow up there. Obviously a ton of corner carry as well. And they do have a good throw game actually, even mid screen, right? Uh, because on a dash, this is minus 4, but uh, obviously they have a lot of forward moving attacks, like the forward medium punch and like the forward heavy punch. So. Yeah, 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 they can mix up the throw approach a lot. Uh, it's it's a hard dash to shake, in my opinion. And uh, one of the special things about Seth is that they can actually absorb abilities from the opponent. So if you happen to combo into the Tandem Engine, and uh, now for example, Seth will get uh, to have Kins heavy bunch uppercuts, right? And this is very, very awesome. Now, all of that would be really good. But what makes Thess very very powerful in this game are his V-Triggers or their V-Triggers. Uh, because V-Trigger 1 is pretty much a ton of damage. Like you hit the opponent once and now they can have to eat a ton of damage into Oki. And V-Skill 2 is pretty much you guaranteeing some of the most nutty and crazy mix-up situations. Uh, let me actually get the V-Trigger 2 on. Right, this is a mix-up machine. This V trigger is honestly amazing at setting up mix-ups. Right, and obviously you can get some follow-ups here. Uh, there are some amazing videos on how uh, to use this V trigger too, so I will recommend checking them out. Overall, if you want a character that have strong mid-range presence, have good wave punishing ability, have some good aerial approach game, and one of the best V triggers in the game at setting up situations and mix-ups, this is certainly the character for you. There is a lot of depth there. So, what are the main issues with this? And there is only one issue in my opinion, and that is the low HP, because this is also at a 900 HP. This is similar to Akuma and Kami. And this means that they are very much a glass cannon. You can't really afford to take a lot of hits with their character, but they do have good defense, good neutral, and good space control, and good ability at forsake mix-ups, which is all very, very good <coughs> to have in this game. Now, let's switch over to Akira, because uh, Akira is pretty much in the same vein, kindish, to Kami and Colleen. It's pretty much another spin on the same idea. Uh, she's also one of the characters who have decent uh, like mid-range game. Her heavies actually have a lot of range, although they have a ton of recovery on whiff, so you kind of have to be careful. Uh, but they are uh, fairly long range, I would say, but, but, but kind of negative as well, so you kind of have, uh, have to manage it uh, somewhat decently. This character have decent walk speed, not the best also, but still pretty decent. What makes her special is uh, are her wave punishing abilities, right? Uh, because if you happen to uh, like wave punish the opponent, uh, you can get some good follow ups here and get some good Oki. Her V trigger, which is her brother Daigo, this is actually one of the uh, more uh, 
This is like one of the more dangerous mix of V triggers in the game, and obviously she does have her amazing V skill too, which means that uh, once you happen to land the hit, you get to launch the opponent in the air and actually get to do some insane combos. I honestly don't remember how to do them anymore. Uh, I have done an Akira guide before, so feel free to check it out. But it's a character I actually haven't played in a very long time. But yeah, the main idea here is pretty much wave punish the opponent and uh, go for a very strong uh, rush down mix up throw strike gameplay. She's very similar in how she's supposed to be played to characters like Kami and Karen and Colleen in many ways. What makes Akira kind of stand out, uh, you know, from these guys uh, is her reliance on uh, optimization, right? Uh, because on a crouching opponent, you get a medium punch your Arimon, and this would be plus three. So you actually get to combo after it. So let's say, for example, that you went for a combo like that. Right? That is good damage. And if the opponent happened to be standing, right, you get the double heavy touch. So, so there's a little bit of awareness and optimization that you can uh, go for with Akira. And obviously, her V skill too. There's a lot of room for innovation and mix ups in terms of combos and the stuff that you can go with it. Uh, I feel it's kind of unfair to talk about Akira this uh, like without going too in details. But like I said, there is a full Akira guide. Feel free to check it out. I will leave a link to the guide playlist in the description. Now let's move over to the next guy, and uh, the next guy is a little bit of a fan favorite, and that is Oro. 